Hi, and welcome to Bomb Bomb Break Live. I'm Val Curtis, the editor in chief of BombBombBreak.com. And again, I'm so excited to be here with you today. We're on Google Plus Hangouts, and we're also on YouTube, that you can watch us every week. Um, Bomb Bomb Break Live is here to put a face and a voice to our favorite bloggers and writers across the internet, and we want to interact with you, our audience. So if you are joining us live today, just inside the comments, you can leave a question for our guest, and we will get those to her. And that's our, our goal, is to get to talk to you, our audience. So our guest, we have a true blogging legend with us today. Um, Jen. She <laughs> went viral with a little elf um, called Overachieving Elf on the Shelf Mommy. And and that was on her blog, People I Want to Punch in the Throat. She has three books to date, two more on the way. She's a speaker. She's this and that and the other thing, too. Um, her latest book, I Just Want to Be Alone, which also features Rebecca, our bedroom editor, and other Bon Bon Break contributors. It came out this past weekend and is available on Amazon. But let's get on here. Jen, hi. Hi. So good to have you on here. Thank you. I'm excited. So, before we get too far started, I told Jen we got to talk shrimp. Before we get going too far, we have right. a little. Um, I was sent five pounds of frozen shrimp in dry ice, and um, Oxo sent me a bunch of tools. And so I, I was laughing. I was showing Jen some of these before the show, and I said, I just need to have you in to interact with me and show these tools. So. Um, I made a recipe. There's a shrimp taco recipe that's like to die for on the on the site right now, and, and we're giving away all these tools plus more and a hundred dollar um, Visa gift card. Anyway, so this was one of the first tools that was given to me, and <laughs> Jen had some feedback. I don't know what the hell that's for, but it doesn't belong <laughs> in the kitchen. This is actually um, maybe a Rebecca lemon. knows what that's for. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lemon reamer, and it uh, actually a reamer. Of course, it's called a reamer. Okay. Yes, and so <laughs> and so it works incredibly well. I, you won't believe the amount of juice you can get out of your lemon with that. I okay. was also given I'll take your word for it. This tool. That looks like a weapon. Yeah, and this is actually um. Amazing! I used it last night. Uh, you, yeah. Um, you use it on the shrimp, and it cuts the back of the carapace, the shell, and like devein. Quick move, and it's done. It makes cleaning shrimp so easy. And then there were these tongs, and I use tongs all the time. Everybody uses tongs, but I um. I have a lot of like special surface pans, and I always use the metal tongs, and it scratches everything. These are silicone tipped. Totally fabulous. Great, love those. And um, this, there, there were other things in the box that I got, but I just had to point these out. And this one is like the most genius thing. I know it looks so silly, but this is a steamer that you just like pop in your pot, and then you put your veggies in there, and the handles stick out the top. So you don't have to burn yourself when you're pulling everything out, and it's not in something really, really hot, because I always put those little metal things in the bottom of my pot, and I end up burning myself. It flips out. There's like a big mess. This, you just pop everything out, and if you want to blanch it, you can like throw it right into ice, or you can um, just run cool water over whatever you're steaming. It's really great. I like love this little basket. Um, and You're using a lot of big words for for me, blanching and steaming. Like, where's the stuff that goes in the microwave? I just need the microwave stuff. Did you get a microwave <laughs> of any kind? <laughs> what you were saying earlier, you like you talk about these things with such lust, and I was like, I well, like I feel like it's orgasmic for you a little bit. <laughs> well, kitchen gadgets. Uh, and this one, this is the one I was actually. Okay, that one I know what it is. I have that one. That one I have. Yes, it's an apple thingy. Yay, I have that one. <laughs> yeah, I use this like three times a day. No stinking lie. My kids eat yeah. apples like you wouldn't believe. And this is the easiest tool. Like on like every household should have one of these. This yeah. is like awesome. So in the post with the taco thing, I actually put together a little OXO store because I, I started counting up how many things I had just off the top of my head and I think I, I have 54 things in the store and I own all of them I use them and so I really really just kinda 
How many drawers do you have in your oh. kitchen? I don't have enough space for all that. Well, here's the interesting thing. I have a single, I have a silverware drawer, and then I have one other drawer, and that's it. In my, I have, well, I might have three canisters on the counter, but, and a lot of things hanging. <laughs> yeah, like, you must, yeah. All your tongs and... I have a two-butt kitchen, so it's, you know, myself and my husband, and nobody else can be in there at that time, but usually it's only a one-butt, like I get everybody out of my little space. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's talk about your week. You've had a big week. You yeah. have had a birthday. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. And you had, um, you know, a little book release happen on Saturday, the same day. Just a little one. Yay! There it is. <laughs> my books came last night. I was so excited. I laid them in like you know, like this movies where they lay in all that in their money. I laid in my books last night and rolled around. <laughs> I know. I love that your books came. See, they came. Well, you know, we talked to them and said, you know, make sure you have them for the show. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so the and the book's doing well. I've been watching it go on the Amazon charts, climbing up there. Yeah, it's doing really well. We're very excited. We're very pleased. You never know. You know, I mean. The second book, you just you never know. You hope it lives up to the first, but it seems like this one. Its reviews have been really good, and the the people seem real excited about it. So yeah, I think it's doing well. That's excellent. I love it. I, I everywhere I look, I see the little um door hanger. Yeah. Everybody's... We're trying to bring really anything we can. <laughs> Pardon? I said you're really great at grabbing good images that are so, you see them, like you see them and you know, I love it. Thank you, thanks. That's a real goal of mine, I want I to have a cover that when you look at the cover, it makes you laugh and it makes you understand exactly what the book's going to be about, like you know instantly what it's going to be about, so, uh, mission accomplished, I guess. <laughs> yeah, definitely, so, as you know, I've been gathering questions all week mm -hmm. from um, some of our contributors and friends and editors and things for you, and I have actually an insane list. Um, okay. <clears throat> so at one point, we might have to just like pick a number and go with that. I actually numbered the questions just in case. Okay. We can't okay. get to all of them. Um, but the first one I have for you, um, and of course, I mean, I read your stuff all the time. I always read your things. I'm not a big comment Thank leaver, you. sorry, but That's okay. I, I read all the time. And Thank so you. um I wanted to start off with this question for you. Uh-huh. Are you ready? What? If you could throw a parade for anything, what would it be? <laughs> hmm, I think I asked that question to someone recently. <laughs> uh, Nikki Napper at uh, Moms Who Drink and Swear. She said her husband should throw her a parade, and I actually think I probably need to throw my husband a parade. <laughs> if I could throw a parade, I'd throw a parade for my husband. He lets me throw him under the bus constantly, uh, all in the name of humor and book sales and page reads. So, but he is, you saw him yesterday in action. He's just, he's a powerhouse, and he is, he is, the, he is the man behind the machine, and I would throw him a parade, actually. That's awesome, and he is, he's so great. I yeah. Yesterday, he kept on, while I was talking to Jen, he kept on, like, sneaking behind the screen, and he would, like, interject things and, and, and say things. Oh, cool. like, oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> he's definitely behind the scenes, literally. Yes, kind of literally, he would not come on camera at all. <laughs> and it was just me in a hangout. It wasn't even yes. anything. I mean, I was nope. in bed. <laughs> No, nope, he will not. He will not show his face to anyone. So, so okay. that might make the parade kind of tricky. We'd have to, you know, hide it, put a bag over his head or something. But he'd be on the float with the bag over his head. So he'd be I like it. Yeah. I like it. Okay, so here's a question for you, and this is to get to know Jen a little bit more. Okay. Beetles or stones? Oh man, beetles. Beetles? Yeah. Beetles. Nice. Yeah. I'll I'm. I'm just not. I'm not a rocker. I guess. I don't know. I like. I like the Beatles. They're whole, you know, they have cute little songs. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm soft inside. <laughs> I know we talked cat memes. Yes, yes. I love I love Grumpy Cat. I think he's great. The rest of them all can go to hell, but I love Grumpy Cat. So. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and and my question. So your last book was um, I just want to pee alone. Yes. And so since you have have I mean you do have two children since. Since you um, 
wrote that book, obviously, I'm wondering if your children got the message. Do you now get to pee alone? I do. My kids are now um, seven and nine, so now they do think it's kind of gross to see me pee. And I actually probably have to close, like, you know, you get so used to, like, never closing the door because they're going to come in anyway, so, and you want to hear what they're doing, and, and now it's like my nine-year-old is finally like, Mom, seriously, like, close the door. Like, no one needs to see that. I'm like, oh, sorry, honey, you know. So, yeah, I think that's a real problem for both the hubs and I. We both have a real problem now. We, we just, I'm like, hubs, close the door. Like, our daughter does not want to see you anymore. So, um, so yes, yeah, they do give us plenty of time to pee alone now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there is a light at the end of the tunnel, people. It's coming. <laughs> but yes, they do. Soon. I'm, I'm something to look forward to. So yeah. I know that you um, participated last year and listened to your mother. And one of the things you did is you shared about why you wanted to do the books. But for those of us that didn't get a chance to see that, could you share a little bit about that story? About why I wanted to do the anthologies? Mm -hmm. Okay, so part of it was, you know, like you said earlier, um, when I first started blogging, I was kind of all by myself. Like I didn't realize that there was a blogging community out there. I felt like I felt like every blog was my competition, sort of. Like, and I also felt really um, just sort of insecure, I guess. Like, you know, I'd look at these blogs and I think, oh my god, they're like so much better than I am, and they're so beautiful, and they do all these amazing things. And and it actually kind of fueled me, though. Like that's kind of where the angst came from <laughs> for the Elf post was. I was like, okay, seriously, this cannot be real. <laughs> you know, stop this. And you know, and that one took off, and it did really well. And then I had all these, you know, I had all these fans. And then I had also through that, I met a lot of bloggers that way too. A lot of bloggers reached out to me at that point to, you know, congratulate me, to ask me for advice, to, you know, just you're funny. We want to be, I want to be your friend. You know, I want to wear your clothes and, you know, braid your hair. And and so we, you know, and so I started meeting this community of women, and you know, and everybody had different levels of success at that point. And but there were so many that didn't have they didn't have an audience yet and they didn't have their voices out there yet and and so when I put out the Christmas book again I had like really good success with the Christmas book on my own and they were really helpful in that they helped promote it and and so when I had the idea for the anthology I thought you know we should do this together and you know my whole favorite thing is when the you know when the water rises all boats rise and so I was like together we can make the water rise and we can all you know go and so when I did the Pee Alone book, that one was different. I literally like handpicked like everybody in there and wanted, you know, wanted who I wanted and and, and we worked really hard to promote it. And then with the be or the Be Alone book, I opened it up a little bit more this time and, you know, invited some more people that I had not really known and I didn't, you know, I, I discovered them this time around and so, and so it's been really you know, both ex both times have been really fun. With with Pee Alone it felt like a group of really close friends like getting together and doing this and then with Be Alone we're we're all still kind of meeting each other and learning about each other but we're 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 creating a tribe and I'm all about tribes like I think tribes are really really important in the blogging community because I don't think that people can succeed on their own I think that they need things like bomb bomb break or someone like that to help to promote and share them and then the reciprocity I think that's the, the real key you know you have to you have to give back and and so that's what I've tried to do with Be Alone and Be Alone I love that, and it was interesting because part of our conversation that we had yesterday is you have an amazing community that you've built on Facebook, but we both know that that's become a little tricky um, since December and their and their new model that they've set up. Yeah. So I'm trying I'm trying really hard to bring Jen over to the Google Plus side. Come on, Jen, I'm bringing you. <laughs> I I have a Google Plus account. I am over there with my. 300 people in my circle or whatever I have, but um, yeah, I think that Google Plus, you know, we've been hearing it. If you go to any sort of blogging or you know social media conference, you keep hearing that 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 this was coming. Everyone, the writing was on the wall from Facebook for a long time that this was coming, that our free ride was over, and and I understand that completely. I get that, but then I'm also not going to stick around. I'm not going to pay to boost posts, and I'm not going to. I don't make enough money to do that. So. No, I would, I would Okay, so for Bomb Bomb Break, we're a small little following in comparison to you. But, um, I mean, for us to boost a post, it's between 5 and 20 bucks. You told me how much it was with your following to boost a post, and my teeth literally almost yeah. fell out. Sure. It's like close to $3,000 to boost a post right now for us. And I can't do that. Even I don't sell enough books. <laughs> I, don't make enough, I don't make enough off of that. So... Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll probably, I mean, I'm on Google Plus, and I'll be, I'll probably be looking to make the shift. 
and and I think subscription is good too because I think that you know your readers who subscribe to everyone's busy and your Facebook feed gets full and I get that and it's hard to check in and it's a time suck and so I think you know if you love a blog you should subscribe to it because and get it in your inbox or get it on a reader so that at night you know when you have a couple minutes to yourself you can sit down and read real quick the the ones you really really want to read and and see who you're who you want to catch up with or get a you know daily di weekly digest and get a whole week's worth at a time or something like that but I think subscription is probably the best route but I will be I will be making a big Google Plus push yes definitely yes good I'm bringing you with me <laughs> yeah. It's not as scary. It. I've actually been learning a lot over there because it does seem really intimidating at first. Um, but it's very similar to Facebook. It just has different word, different terminology. You know, you plus instead of like. You put people in circles instead of lists. You know, so I I'm getting it. I'm I'm getting it. I just um, it's just something to get used to. I don't like change. So you know, that's change funny. is hard. But I have to tell you that one thing that I really like in Google Plus that I've seen versus Facebook is that it seems like comments are um. There's a lot of genuine conversation that happens within a post, even yeah. it's not in the communities and things. Like within a post, you can actually get a conversation, and and you don't have the limitation of, oh, well, that person hasn't liked me, so I can't mention them. Right, right. Yeah, I do. I mean, I do miss the conversation. The conversation really has dropped a lot, and I miss my readers. I miss interacting with them. So yeah, it would be nice on Google Plus, maybe. We'll get you there. We'll I miss them. <laughs> So another question, um, what is your favorite thing about putting the stories together? Um, my favorite thing is probably just reading them all. Like I love reading the submissions and um, you know this time around, like I said, with the first one I handpicked and so I didn't have to cut anybody. This time around I, I went higher, you know, I invited everybody from P alone back, you know, some of them did, some of them didn't, and I invited more. And so this time I knew going in I was going to have to cut people and, but I do love reading them and and kind of they all were they were all so good like I can't tell you like there's not one there wasn't one bad one I wish there was I wish there was a one and I could be like oh no you know but there really wasn't and so the 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 part I think I enjoy the most is sort of I sort of section them out and figure out how they're all going to fit together as a cohesive book like I sort of have my overall theme but I really don't have you know a cover in mind yet I don't have even maybe I have a working title I don't know that it's really going to be my title and until I start really putting it together and seeing who fits together and so I think that's the fun and then just reading it all before anybody else reads it <laughs> you know knowing you know, oh you're gonna love that one <laughs> so that's always fun too that's that's that has to be fun you get that, yeah. that inside edge <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> on the yes. hottest new book you know so. like I remember um, the ugly Volvo I read hers Raquel she had sent hers in and I really had not um, I don't know her that well we're not you know we're, we hadn't really interacted before this and I read her online and I liked her online but the essay she sent was I mean hysterical like I was in the middle of a restaurant like laughing my ass off you know and and my husband was like what is it and I'm like just wait just wait <laughs> you know, like this is amazing so I like that I love that so did he get to read them did you let him uh, read through the stories yeah before he read He's not much of a reader. He's he's uh he likes movies, <laughs> so he'll wait for the movie version. But you know he would read anyone like that were because so many of the ladies he already reads, uh, you know kind of anyway because he manages a lot of um you know he he manages a lot of the social media for me like he'll tell me like what's going on with other bloggers and stuff because he reads a lot of them so um so he knew so the ones he already knew but he lo he read a lot of the new ones that he had not read before so yeah but he did read he did read Raquel's Ugly Volvos he did read hers and. He did love it too. Well, that's good. Well, I have to tell you, um, you're gonna love the wall. I'm like, the, the reason why I keep looking down here is that I'm like peeking at the wall on Google Plus right now in the commentary fly. Um, <laughs> um, have you made enemies in the blogosphere cutting anyone, or are you going to plead the fifth on that? <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't know, but let me think of it. You know, probably the the one that probably everybody thinks I'm enemies with is um, Blossom's Bunkhouse. She's the one who wrote the Elf on the Shelf post that I made fun of originally. And we are not enemies. We, in fact, Blossom ordered I think 12 or 15 of my books, you know, at Christmas last year, and had me sign them all for her friends. So um, we are not enemies. I think that Blossom is a terrific blogger. She just you know, she just wrote a post that kind of irritated me. That's all. But I think that 
but we have we have buried the hatchet. We see the humor in each other. And she actually pushed back. She poked back at me on hers, and you know, and I appreciate that. I appreciate it because my whole thing is I'm not trying to be malicious. I'm just trying to be honest, and I'm trying to say, come on, just cut the crap. Like you do not roll out a red carpet for your elf. Like stop that. You know, you know, I can't even move my stupid thing. Just stop it. And and so, um, because I do think a lot of blogging is kind of phony sometimes with all that stuff, and. I, so I'm not trying to make enemies. I'm just trying to pull back the veil and show your messy kitchen when you're making your shrimp with your OXO supplies. You know, you show me the mess. Don't tell me you know, I made this amazing shrimp recipe. It was amazing. You need to have it. It was so. amazing, and it was so good. But I have to tell you, you that worried we, a little bit. Come on. No, actually, it was really easy. But because my husband grilled it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. um, he's the grill expert. But but the funny thing is, is that my whole plan, which I wrote about in the thing, was like to have these shrimp tacos, and my kids like totally poo pooed the tacos, and they were <laughs> like, no, we just want shrimp on our plate with the beans and the rice. And I was like, oh, well, that's actually a pretty good idea. So I like. Took pictures of that too, and then and then my husband's like, "Well, I can have more shrimp if I just make like a shrimp bowl," and I was like, <laughs> "Work it!" And so all of those are in there. <laughs> like, Good, yeah. I just, but um, but I don't think I've made any enemies. If I have, they haven't let me know that we're enemies. I, I don't think so. No. Okay, and so I'm sure there are people who hate me. They just don't tell me. <laughs> you how could? How could anyone hate you? You're so oh, it's easy. Uh, it's easy. <laughs> but um, well, so you write about controversial topics all the time. Have and is there anything you wouldn't touch? Um, right now, I I have not touched, and I probably won't touch gun control. It's just there's too many layers, too many sides, too many um, too many opinions. So that one, I probably I. There are many times when I sit down and think I'm going to write about it, and then I don't, and then I. It seems to me we put a post up, and it's one of those to me, Jen, that it seems like you need to be able to say, "I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to follow it up with this, and this, and this, and then we can talk about it." But it's yeah. you can't really do that. It's like you need to present all of these angles on that topic before you can yeah. even start the discussion. Well, and I heard a good conversation yesterday. I was listening to NBR, and they were talking about um, the local Kansas City mayor, and he was talking about gun control, and he was saying how gun control is different for, you know, what the gun laws you need in rural communities is different than what you need in urban communities, and I think that's true, and I think that that's where it gets difficult, too. So it's like, and I'm not a gun owner, and I so I just don't have a whole, I'm just not going to touch that one. Yet. Okay. And not yet. And so on, kind of loosely on this topic, but when you become a mega blogger like yourself, um, you you start to find these little people called trolls. Oh, yeah. And when we, it was interesting for us, when we went over 10,000 on Pinterest, all of a sudden everybody started commenting on everything, mm -hmm. like all the time. And so it was, and it wasn't always positive. And a lot of the times people hadn't even read the content um, before they said something. So what is your favorite troll story? My favorite troll story. Um, well, okay, so I have a post that I wrote a while ago about dog owners. And I said that I don't, I don't like people who treat their dogs like children. You know, I don't like them when they dress them up like little babies and I'm supposed to call it, you know, I'm supposed to be anti-gen to this dog or whatever. I'm not, that sounds like my, these are my, my family, but they're not. But, and when, and somehow every few weeks or so, I must be shared on like some sort of dog lover board somewhere on the internet because I'll get people that will just come and be like, you know, may you rot in hell, you dog hater. You know, I'm like, I didn't say I hate dogs. I didn't say let's go out and like murder dogs. I just said I don't want one and I don't like people who treat their dogs like children. And so um, so there's a lot of really passionate dog owners out there that really love to, um, you know, hope I burn in hell. They hope that I, you know, I, I'm a godless person. My soul is damned. I mean, like, you know, if you, you know, they hope that my, ch I mean, they, threat they don't threaten my kids, but they wish harm to my children, you know, stuff like that. You know, you must, you know, your kids, you know, you, you should not even be allowed to have children because you don't even like dogs. <laughs> so, so those are always, those are always a good read. I do like, I do love those people. Thank you, dog people, because those are just page views, and I need those. Thank you. So, <laughs> please click so, an ad on your way out. 
So I have to tell you, we're not even making a dent in all the questions. I'm going to uh, ask these questions to you so we can get you to answer them. Um, so I'll, we're going to finish up with this one. Okay. And who is the person you'd like most to punch in the throat? <laughs> wow. Oh, man, that's so tough. Um, it changes every single day. <sighs> wow. Gosh, this is tough. Um, probably... It's always political. It's always like whoever is making the most noise in Congress or whatever about, you know, banning gays from businesses or, you know, wanting more business in my uterus or something like that. So usually probably Congress in general, just the, the all of Washington D.C. Let's just do that. A whole blanket. I'm 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 equal opportunity. I'm bipartisan. All of them. <laughs> Let's just start all over with all new people. There you go. Clean blanket. Clean blanket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Get well, your uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here today. This was thank really. You. Fun. I'm sorry I talked so long and we didn't get to all your questions. No, it's, I didn't think we were going to get nearly to them at all. You're supposed to talk. That's the whole idea. Okay. Well, oh, and the book is available on iTunes and Barnes and Noble too, not just not just Amazon. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Thanks for mentioning all those. And yeah. when you read it and get it, leave a review for Jen yes. in your favorite place, so that because those reviews are like gold for her. So. Get those reviews in there. Check her out at People I Want to Punch in the Throat. Check her out on Facebook. Check her out on Google+. Plus. That's, <laughs> we're going to get yeah. her here. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Jen, for being Thanks. here. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So um, to everybody, thank you for being here this week. A really quick thing on Thursday, we have our Bomb Bomb Break Girls Night Out. It's going to be at 8 Pacific time, 11 Eastern. We have Rebecca Gallagher from the bedroom. We have Keisha Beckford from the attic. We're also going to have the ladies from Science of Parenthood, um, Noreen and Jessica. So it's we're hitting all the hot topics right now from celebrity to politics. And we will see you right here next week also, Tuesday, with Sarah Elton. She's the author from Starting from Scratch, What You Should Know About Food and Cooking, right up my alley. Um, and it's actually a book for kids about getting them familiar with food. So, um, And it starts off with taste, teaching your kids about taste. So it's really fun. So join us then. Um, I think that's it. So I plan on seeing you Thursday night, again on Tuesday, and until next time, be good to yourself and take a bomb bomb break because you deserve it.